This well-deserved applause is for you. Please come up on stage. the rest of uh, your colleagues, the rest of your crew, I would like to introduce my colleague, Nari Schaffling, who will be here in order to translate, in order to help us understand the fine tunes of what's being said. Good evening. This is Chihu Park as Uni. Joy Sua Cho. This is my assistant director, Semi Gu. And the last one is my composer, Matthias Jernisha. And also I'd like to thank my, some of my crew who are in the audience and also my wonderful international sales team, Contents Panda. Thank you very much for being here. It is a pleasure and an honor to be able to talk to you after having watched this beautiful Phil, thank you all for this amazing um, presentation, acting, production. I'm sure that there are lots of questions in the audience as well. It would be great for us if we could have exactly a little bit of light. Um, as uh, usual, my colleagues are walking around with a microphone and with a piece of white paper or with a Berlinale sign. Just make yourselves visible if you want to ask a question. In the meantime, I would like to use the opportunity to ask you a question. As I would say that the subject of the film is sort of timeless. Um, there's a yearning for companionship, a yearning for understanding, a yearning for love, for being understood. And at the same time, you place it, not today, not 100 years ago, but 25 years ago. Why this choice in time? Um, so first of all, 1994 was very important, crucial year in Korea because of the big songs of bridge collapse. It was a big tragedy in our country because 
Back then, our country was a developing country, and we had this hope to be recognized by the world and also to be growing up fast to become a big country. So we had to build everything so fast, and then uh, so the bridge collapsed, and the next year, Samsung, very, very famous Samsung department store also collapsed. So within two years, a lot of people died. So I had to choose this year of 1994 because of the tragedy. Also, I was in middle school in the 1994, like Eunhee. So I had to bring my own personal memories linking into this bridge collapse. And also, the bridge collapse, the reason that I chose to have this tragedy of bridge collapse is because it was symbolization of separation of physical bridge into two pieces. Also, having this parallel between this bridge collapse and also her separation, feeling of longing and separation from the world. That's why I chose the year of 1994. For you, if I may, um, 1994, you weren't even born yet. What was it like for you to play such a central role in a time before you were born, using gadgets that maybe you didn't even know before making the film, tape recorders, pagers, and play in a situation that has such importance in people's biographies, in the memory of a country, but which happened prior to your birth. Uh, I haven't been born, I wasn't born then, of course, but uh, yeah, I kind of got into the material and uh, the director was so kind to let me know about pages and all those kind of media devices that, did, that doesn't, don't exist anymore. Uh, so yeah, this was fun actually because it's so different from now. Um, yeah, even though I, had, I haven't been present in uh, in, 19, in 1994, no 1994, excuse me. Um, I think that the the film is about very every everyday things. I mean, we, we fight with your family, with our family. We fight with our boyfriend. We make up again. We yearn for love. So I think it's a very common, uh, common topics that uh, this film deals about. So for me, in preparing this role, it was kind of easy to, to get access to that since I'm also a teenager myself and I have the same experiences. Um, and for preparing for the role in regard to the, um, to the accident in 94 where the bridge collapsed, and Kim Hee Song died. It's just something yeah you can learn from the news, and um, and also similar very tragic incidents happen in the last few years in South Korea too. So I can relate to that. Thank you. <laughs> we have a question from the audience. Hello. Hi. Okay, I just wanted to ask a question. Thank you, first of all, for this great movie. I'm from Korea too. And um, I just wanted to ask about the lump that um, that you had to get rid of during the movie. She um, is there any like meaning behind it um, or relationships between in his really um, emotion and the lump? So, I, I found that the, when people are really uh, feeling unstable, ruthless, and having this emotional trauma and pain, they get sick physically. The emotional pain becomes physical suffering. And I wanted to depict the two bond between the two. So, Winnie gets sick because she wants to get attention by being sick from her family members. So she looks so happy when mom cooks dinner for her and then gives her side dishes in a very, very different manner than before. It's somehow very sad and pathetic 
But I thought we sometimes try to look for ways to love in that way too. Describing the relationship between the daughter and the mother, looking for the mother's love. Maybe I can ask you, as the mother, what was it like for you to play, uh, to work with such a young and talented new actress? What was it like for you to create this bond, mother-daughter, with you? Me, me being the mother, I kind of played the generation of my mother back then in the, in the 90s. So the mothers of the 90s, or the parents in the 90s, they were hoping, of course, for a better future for the children. So they were very nitpicky about them being very, you know, diligent and going to school and um, crappy. And they didn't want them to experience that kind of poverty that they went through. They, the parents, they did everything for well, the well-being of their children and sacrificing their own wishes and their own individual desires. Being, yeah, their own person, just being the, the mother or the father. So uh, from the outside, they look very lovely and um, yeah, loving. But uh, as you have seen in the movie, in the inside, it's a very um, yeah, it was the very essence of how the Korean families were back then. 그 은희의 눈으로 바라봤어요. So if we look at it closely, then I what you see on the movie on the screen is that is the perspective of Unni looking at her mother and trying to understand her, and not me being trying to be the mother to Unni. So uh, yeah, it's a filtered perspective on Unni. I have very happy memories of uh, us the three, the director Unni and me. Sorry, to you. And, and me being together and working on this on the storyboard, on the character development, and uh, yeah, we really enjoyed the time that we had together. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> what you just described really struck me. This, as I would uh, call it, this lack of dialogue between the generations, or. This, this yearning for closeness, but the not being able to communicate with each other. Uh, hello. Uh, first of all, I, I would like to say, say uh, thank you for this incredible experience. I really enjoyed the film. And uh, I was especially fascinated how you used the cinematography to, to show the different emotions and feelings throughout the film. Um, my question is, I, I was wondering when you first started developing um, the story, what, what was the initial idea? Was it about telling a story about Korea in, in the 90s or was it uh, initially the story about uh, the girl? Um, so, it, was a, it did a, star, a story first. It started from my nightmare that I had when I was in graduate school. So, so I had this reoccurring dreams that I, um, when I was in graduate school, back then I did my master's degree in New York, and that was my first time being in foreign country speaking new language. And then I started to have this weird dream that I had to go to middle school again. Although in my near life, I knew that I was a graduate student, but for some reason, in the dream, I had to go to middle school. And that felt like disaster and nightmare. So whenever I woke up from, woke up from the dream, I was all sweaty and like felt so relieved by the fact that, that I don't have to go to middle school. And then I found it very interesting, and then I wanted to explore what it was and why I felt this way about going back to the period. I thought there must be something going on underneath. So I started to write down everything. All the episodes, all the emotions, all the lines that I heard, or hidden memories and trauma and everything here and there. 
I started to collect everything. And then it became like piles and piles of memories. And it was like 10 years ago when I first started to write down. And then from 2013, I started to write a screenplay. So it was a format of screenplay in the beginning, but it became screenplay through the process of facing past, facing my emotional baggage, and then I had to do my best to have this healthy distance from my past and make it into fictional screenplay, which everyone can relate to. So in the beginning, if I have to ask your, uh, answer your question, it wasn't even like format of screenplay. It wasn't even about anything like a film. But it was more of piles of big chunk of my personal memories and trauma and everything like very like hidden beauty and unknown stuff in my life. So. Personal and almost cathartic process, which now I think spoke to many of us um, uh, in the audience. There's one more question. Hi. Uh, I was curious about the same-sex relationships. Was it was there were there some homosexual implications? And if so, what are what's the status of homosexuals in Korea today? And in the 90s. In the 90s? In 94. Okay. At that time. And what is it today? So, a lot of people, not a lot, but some people ask the question why it has to be bisexual. And then I would say, there's no reason. It's so natural. So, I didn't need any reason why she had to be bisexual. and that actually opened a lot of whole new perspective of my life because I wasn't, I didn't want to make any as typical stereotype heterosexual women who are in this like side, this side or that, the other side. I just wanted to depict any as a character who is very diverse and who can be very rebellious and also have a ability to recognize other human beings who is Yeongji, teacher Yeongji. So for me, having that element wasn't just about sexuality, but also more of uh, having some kind of complex human being, complex character into any character. And then if I have to answer the second question, what it was like in the 90s and now, so actually now in Korea, if you, like you will see a lot of women, female couple, who are holding each other in public so, not, so freely, only because of the fact that people don't even recognize there must be gay or lesbian. So they kind of take, take, or take advantage of it because no one recognizes or no one even assumes that there is any lesbian couple in public. So in that sense, it's very, Openly, they're openly expressing their love, but it's somehow very new. But very strangely, a lot of girls in, who are in middle school and high school, they have this crush on other girls because they are more fluid and open to sexuality. But then they become taller heterosexual women when, we go, when they go to college. And then they try to hide that thing because of this social norm, but then that doesn't mean they don't have it, but they, the people who are in middle school and high school, they don't even depict or limit their sexuality as what it is. So I thought having relationship, a showing relationship between Uni and Yuri has to be so natural, because it is natural in your life. Hi, good evening. Thank you very much for, for the movie, As Usual Generation, the programming is excellent. 
And my question is a little bit similar, but regarding the child abuse. I mean, uh, the beating of the father to the daughter and then the brother, because somehow, I guess, imitates the father and beats her. And she has a friend, and the friend told her that uh, the brother also hits her. So was that so bad in Korea in the 90s? Um, and how is nowadays? That's improved, I hope so. And again, excellent, all of you, thank you. So the question about domestic violence and gender roles as well, not only parents, but between brother and sister. Back in the 90s, our society, society was much more conventional and male dominated. It is changing now, but it is still very much machoistic, male oriented society. But that doesn't mean I didn't grow up without knowing, I, that doesn't mean I grew up without knowing happiness. I clearly knew what was the happiness and what was the true meaning of happiness, or, or true meaning of my life because of the fact that I was very marginalized. And when you become marginalized, you become knowing more of truth of real meaning of life, and you get to explore a lot of beauty in the life because of that. So in that sense, I don't want to depict the domestic violence as a mean of to have to create some conflict for the film. I, and I did not want to depict the father and brother character as an evil because they are not the evil, they are also victim of society. So I wanted to depict society, societal circumstance as it is, but I didn't, I try my best not to depict them as an evilish character which are just functioning as character who are just abusing uni. So I just thought this society is like a circling, vicious circle. Brother beats Uni, then later Uni also fights back into this Chinese academy principle, although she doesn't have anything they have done wrong. So I thought I wanted to depict this circle of power dynamic and abusing like it goes into from this person to the other person. So father, father abuse his uh, his his son by educating him and then like, forcing him to go to Seoul National University. And then this brother tried to abuse his uh, little sister because he was so suffered. So I just wanted to depict that sort of circle and everyone become victim, also some kind of criminal both. Not the criminal, but some kind of people who can harm others because of the fact that they got so pain. I don't see any question in the audience right now, so I'm going to take advantage of this moment Walk to the other side of the stage. Katia. Hi. Looking at this row of women, um, I notice that you fall out of the role a little bit. And uh, you also, I suppose, I assume, have a different mother tongue than your colleagues. Nonetheless, you compose the music for the the film, how does that work together? Coming from a different background, different socialization, how do you still, how are you still able to, I don't know, get the feeling for for um, this piece of art and create a part of it? Yeah, it was kind of interesting. I met Zoe last year here at Berlinale and then she introduced me to Bora. Um, so actually we never met at the end of the film, I never met with Bora in person really, but we had like this kind of bang friendship relationship uh, through internet. Um, yeah, and how it was like to, to find the right tone. Um, there's like specific pace of this film that we don't know maybe so often like in the European films. So I was like 
look, looking for this space also in the music and one, once we found it then it went kind of through the whole film. Uh, yeah. I, that it really spoke to me, I don't know, I um, guess to probably to many of us, but, but it, it, it really added a layer to the film and spoke to me in a different language as well. I think we have time for one last question. Thank you so much for the movie. I really enjoyed it, and I have a question for casting and uh, the uh, other actors. Uh, other actors in movie are so excellent, and uh, I'm wondering, like, how do you do casting? And uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I feel really thankful for having this wonderful cast. So, it was very fortunate to have this actress for my film. So, for Chi Hu, like I will just explain one by one briefly. For Chi Hu, um, she was in the beginning of the process of audition, and when she read my script, she read it as it is, like in a way that I really meant. So, I was very surprised by the fact that she really understands this nuanced style of acting. But then, after the audition, she kind of looked, at, looked back at me before she leaves, saying, Dear Tervora, I'm very charming. I can be very charming more and more if you see me more and more. So please call me back for another audition. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was very amusing and so charming and so determined. I see a new character in that way. She is very charming. She can be very cruel. She can be very sensitive and very, very determined, also free of her life. So I chose Uni Jihu because of that process of interaction, very strong interaction in the beginning. And Youngji, uh, Sebyeok Kim, she was in Hong Sang Soo's recent films, like in a row, uh, the day after and grass. She did an amazing job for Hong Sang Soo's film. Also, she was my favorite actress in Korea. I always wanted to work with her. And for character Youngjae, Youngjae character's line in Korean is actually, it can be really over the top if the actress doesn't do a good job. Because of the line, like, oh, how many people can understand who you are, blah, blah, blah. That lines can be really over dramatic if the actress doesn't do a good job. But she did a really great job, like a very nuanced, nuanced way. And when I first had a rehearsal with her, before we made a final decision, she and Chi Hu read the script together. And then I cried in front of these two. And I got so, I felt so warm because there was a time that I had a really, really tough time making this film. And her line as young teacher Youngji deeply, deeply like touched my heart. So I chose her because of that. It was our like instinct choice. And Sian <sighs> Li as mom, she also was my one of favorite actress in Korean cinema. So I asked for her to do the role um, even before I saw her reading this script. And then she did an amazing job because the one episode that I really admire is she met my own mom <laughs> to know about the character. And Sunyan would talk about how my mom was explaining about her life. And when I heard that, it was very bizarre and surrealistic and very touching because my mom was a totally different person when she, my mom was talking to her, I think my mom was very happy to get attention by her and then being recognized about her past, no one was interested in. So that was very <laughs> beautiful moments of interaction among these three amazing casts. I feel so thankful and <laughs> yeah, very, very grateful to have these guys. <laughs>